Good morning, everybody. Tommy 80 here. I've got Brian on the other line. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different now. Uh, put a link on my website. Uh, so all you guys have to do is okay. click on so, that. What I did over the weekend, I was in Phoenix, Arizona for a BMX race for my kids race. And I learned uh, a couple of things. Whenever I go to different places, I try to visit dealerships, not uh, just to get business, but primarily to find out. I want to go to a bigger dealership or somebody that's well known to find out what they're doing. If I don't work with them, uh, find out what's going on in, the, in those stores. So I went to Phoenix, Arizona this weekend. It rained like crazy the whole time and they canceled the race on Sunday, but the they got to race on Friday and Saturday. My uh, son got his national number nine award for 2016. So that was awesome. He was excited for that. But I went over to, uh, one of them's called Go Arizona, Go AZ Motorsports or Power Sports. I get it mixed up, but whatever they are, they're the group that uh, the GoDaddy founder, Bob Parsons, uh, bought quite a few years ago. I don't think he still owns it. He sold GoDaddy. I think he may have sold Go AZ. Anyway, I went to one store and they had a lot of different brands. They had everything. They had three different buildings. You got a picture of this. Three different buildings. It looked awesome. And one building they had like a Ducati, BMW, and Vespa. And then another one they had Honda and something else. The third building they had Kawasaki and Triumph and uh, what is it? Euro. I think that's what it is. So they had these three different buildings. They had salespeople all over the place. Uh, the first salesperson that we ran into, who's great. Hey, how you doing there? Anything I can help you with? So yeah, said one of the, the dumbest uh, questions in the world for a salesperson to say. And no, because you know what the answer is. No, thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, okay. And uh, so that was good. After that, a couple of other salespeople said hi to us in the, the different buildings, but nobody ever tried to uh, actually help us out. The something interesting so we stopped and listened to one of the sales ladies she'd been working there for a while listen to one of the sales ladies she had the the same bs that uh doesn't work that she was doing on a, a customer that was obviously not yeah he was credit challenged because he was asking about financing and she could have closed him right there but she just kept on throwing trash out of her mouth rather than do anything right so that store nope not as wonderful as as it may seem and their inventory sucked their sales processes uh sucked also uh so then the next one was ride now went over to the ride now power sports store had a lot more dirt bikes it was more fun they had a ton of side by sides which go az didn't have any side by sides which is weird but over at ride now the only person there were two people in the store, two customers, myself and my son, and two salespeople and a parts guy. The only person that ever said hi was the parts guy. And that's it. The salespeople uh, or managers, whatever they were, not doing a damn thing. And it's awesome when I see stuff like that uh, because it tells me those guys need help and uh but we're not going after them it was just for the experience to find out what's going on but what i wanted to talk about this morning um nobody's gonna know you're all gonna think that you all asked this question and you're probably correct there's a bunch of dealers on here managers salespeople. but um what do we do about the dealer whores out there that are whoring the units out uh in different states it's happening and and normally it happens when people are a little bit panicked dealers don't know what to do they haven't been doing what they are supposed to do so all of a sudden they get on craigslist they they get on in utah ksl and uh they drop their prices down to nothing because that they figure that's the only way we can sell them or they get pissed off at another dealer that's a wholesaler and so they decide you know what i'm going to join in how do you handle people like that um and so i got uh this past couple of weeks i've i've gotten a ton of uh emails and messages about handling those those dealers and you know what um you don't need to worry about them 
Uh, you really don't because they probably sucked before. They probably still suck. But what you've got to do, you get in your CRM. If you're not a salesperson or if you're not a manager that has salespeople that are selling like 30, 40, 50 units a month on average, if you're not that store, get in your CRM. And I know that there's uh, some dealerships on here. They've got salespeople that are doing an average 25, 30, 40 units a month. And I don't mean that they just had a good month, but that's their average. The guys, now they've got something different to do to handle these wholesaling dealers. The guys that don't have that kind of volume out, open your CRMs. That's the first thing I always do. I open up the CRM. I'm sitting in Phoenix. It's pouring rain in the rental car. So I decide, you know what, I'm going to, oh, I got a text from uh, one of my dealers. And so I open up their CRM. I take a look. No, the first thing I did, I went to Lot Vantage. I listened to a phone call, recorded phone call. The salesperson did a very good job on this phone call. Night and day difference. Uh, he asked the right questions. The only thing he didn't ask was, where are you calling from? Because I like to know where a person is calling from. That matters when you're dealing with dealer whores out there. Where is the customer located? Because if they're in your town, you're going to get them in your store. You have to get them in your store. If they're 50 miles away, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. What if there's a, a one of the whores in between your store and their store? It's going to be more difficult and you've got to use a different tactic. And this is Tactical Tuesday, by the way. So we're talking about tactics. What do we do? Um, but, uh, oh, so I listened to the phone call. So it went really well. And the salesperson got the appointment nailed down. Customer said, yeah, uh, I think next Saturday I'll be in at a certain time. So then, okay, so I'm curious. And this phone call happened a week ago, I think. And so I'm curious what happened in between a week ago and now. So I went over to the CRM, got in that on my cell phone, and there's nothing. There's a note there, uh, I think, saying when the customer is going to be in. I, I believe he's coming in on a, a Kawasaki Mule, the Pro FX, I think it is. Um, there was a note in there that he was going to come in, but there was no sign of follow-up in between last the past week. There was nothing there. Nobody called him back. So then I was curious, did the customer show up? No, the customer did not show up. We didn't try to get him back in. Well, we know that I need a, a card here. Let's see. I don't know if I, oh yeah, I've got one here. We know that a certain number of customers, like the majority of them are not gonna show up. Why don't they show up? But then we've got the dealerships where we've got uh, higher closing ratios. We, the, the salespeople selling 20, 30, 40 per person, per month. We've got those and uh, they're following up with these customers, but 60%, you guys know this, 60%, you've got these cards, are going to uh, set appointments with you. 60% are going to show. 60% of those that you set appointments with are going to show. Why would your number be smaller than that? Look in your CRM and find out, are you calling these customers back? Hey, Brian, are you on there right now? I'm listening. What, what, uh, what have you always done to get to uh, to get customers to call back? What what do you find that that these uh, guys aren't doing? I use every form of media available. So I call, I text, I email. Uh, most importantly, I video email and I video text message because I want to take down any type of barrier that might be for that person not to feel comfortable calling me back or coming to my store. Uh, because the reality is a lot of times people are intimidated to come to stores. They're intimidated to come to stores because they don't want the pressure of that experience. Well, if you meet me through a video and we have that connection, you feel more comfortable walking through the doors because now you're just coming to see somebody you know. Now you're just coming to see a friend, if you will. That's what I do. Perfect. And I even do a video now and then to, to get a new dealer. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, because I've got, uh, 
I don't know if he's on here right now, but George, it took, uh, I think it took a couple of years with George. I won't tell everybody who he is, but George, uh, he wouldn't, he quit answering the phone with me. He uh, wouldn't pick up his phone. I had a cell number. We'd text now and then, He, but he quit responding to my text messages. Uh, something I didn't do back then. This was probably three years ago. I never did a video message to him, so I could have done that video message. Now I do those those video messages. But for anybody that wants to raise their show rate, that's what you've got to do. Now, uh, when you're doing 30, 40, 50 units a month, one of those sales guys, you're gonna run out of time. But um, you've got to uh, figure out a process, which I show up in the morning. Well, this morning I had to get here. I, I had a rough night. I still, because I'm sick, my wife's sick, um, I just got home, what, a couple days ago, and uh, I still have to get up early in the morning to get to work to prepare for this stuff and to prepare for this meeting. Same thing as a salesperson. You've got to set aside that time so you can uh, prepare to do some of this stuff. Now, back to the increasing your show rates. You've got to do those, send out those text messages. You've got to do those video messages and send them to your customers because the other guys are not going to do it. There is no reason to worry about those dealerships that are wholesaling their units on Craigslist because uh, it's proven that people will pay more money, whether it's a lot of money or a little bit more money or the same amount of money, they will pay more money to go to the right place, but you've got to try to get them in. Now something, let's see, do I have the right piece of paper here? I was gonna write something down. Well, I'm not gonna, I don't know if you'd be able to see it very well, but if you take, uh, if you take a dealership that's selling, let's say 50 units, man, I'm good at filling up my pages here. If you take a, a dealership that's selling 50 units uh, a month, so hopefully we'll see if you can, yeah, 50 units a month, and you've got a uh, front end average of $1,000, you've got a back end average, let's say it's above average of 500, so that means you're making what, 75,000 in gross in one month on those 50 units. Um, now, if you do fewer than 50 in a month, you're doing 25, just cut those numbers in half. That's all you gotta do there. But um, let's say I'm always paying attention to that deal average there. As a dealer, as a sales manager, I'm paying attention to my deal average. What have I got? So then I'm dealing with the, the, the wholesaling dealers. I'm not gonna lose a deal over price. Uh, if I've got somebody that's selling them for a hundred over, let's say I've got somebody selling them for a hundred under, they're taking taking a loss on them, which normally they're not taking a loss. And well, there's probably a few of them out there, but let's say I'm going to do 10 deals at a hundred dollar profit right there. Let's say I don't even get any back end on them. Um, that's, I'm going to make a thousand dollars right there. So I add a thousand to that. 75. Now I've only got 76,000 in gross right here. I had, what's my deal average? $1,500 deal average. So now I've got 85 units, right? No, I've got 60 units. I've got 60 units, $76,000 in gross. I've got to do the math here. Let's see. Divided by 60. Let's see. 76,000 divided by 60. So now my deal average went to 1266. Yes, it dropped, but I still made my $76,000. I, I didn't go uh, backwards on that. And I got 10 more units out. I'm still okay. I'm still above the national average, but you've got to pay attention to those averages. Now, the salespeople, here's where the salespeople get hurt on these numbers. They get hurt on these numbers because their managers might pay too much attention to the wholesalers out there. Managers out there. The other dealers don't matter. Don't taint your salespeople like the other guys do matter. Um, because your salespeople, they're gonna make, who knows what they're gonna make. You've got different pay plans set up out there. 
You just want them to sell the units. Don't let them get tainted. I was in a store uh, a couple of weeks ago and right in front of the salesperson, the sales manager is upset that the customer made, customer made this ridiculous offer to them. Why would you be upset that you, that you got an offer? We'll take a ridiculous offer, but then what are we gonna do? We're gonna bump that customer on that offer. We're gonna do that, but don't taint your salespeople on that. Brian, you ever run into that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. A little bit? Nothing worse coming into the office excited as a salesperson and having your sales manager uh, look at you with disdain or look at you and, and just suck the life out of your deal. Oh, there's no way we would take that deal. Are you serious? I can't believe you brought that back to me. That's not a real offer. Get back out there and give me a real. When you say those things, first and foremost, because it doesn't follow any sort of process, uh, you're just setting yourself up to be unsuccessful on, on a deal. And that's just the bottom line. Because if we get it, like Tommy said, getting an offer is awesome. That, I mean, it's, it's awesome. An offer gives us the opportunity to bump it, gives us the opportunity to look at the objection and to overcome it. That gives us something to overcome. That's what's important. All we want is a starting point, whatever that starting point is. We just need something to start with. So uh, so if that salesperson, if you salespeople can get an offer, a customer says, oh, I ran into this the other day. A customer didn't say that, but I ran into this. Uh, I saw the notes in the CRM in the right back and it said, Cus let's see, customer was approved on a deal and then he spoke to his wife, wife quit her job and so he couldn't buy the bike. But that was a month ago and we didn't call the customer back. So there's no follow up on that because obviously the, the lady's probably going to get another uh, job. You know, Trump's in office now, so everybody's going to be working. Uh, she can only collect unemployment for so long, <laughs> but she's going to get another job. He's still going to want the bike. And so one thing that was said, I think he was on a 17,000. No, he was not on a 17,000 bike. The notes showed he was on a 2015 Raider, I believe. Well, that's not a $17,000 bike, but he said the bike was too expensive. What's too expensive about it? Is it the price of the bike or is it going to be the payment? That's something you got to think about. You got, you've got to isolate the objection. What is it? Is it the price of the bike or is it really the payment or your wife doesn't have a job? Uh, get it isolated. Call the customer back. Stay in touch with them because eventually he's going to buy now, something else on that deal was, uh, what? We got him approved. Yeah, he was approved, but obviously there was never a commitment to buy. Why would we get somebody approved if there's no, no commitment for them to buy? Um, something else there is getting the, the commitment to purchase from those customers. But the big focus on this, a uh, couple of things. It's, it's the CRM. Don't quit following up with your customers. If you want more people to show up in your showroom, people that you're scheduling appointments with, you've got to uh, you've got to uh, text message them. Get permission from them to text message them. I'm looking at what else I might have here that's helpful for this. Uh, I might uh, tell them what a CRM. I don't know if everybody on the broadcast right now has a CRM, but there might be a couple of people that don't. Could you, could you tell me what a CRM is? Yeah, uh, customer relationship management tool. Like, if you take, uh, let's see, I've got one right here. Here's one of my old ones. Let's see, from what is it, 2009, and take a look in there. You can have a handwritten CRM. You can have a, a digital. CRM, it's on your computer, but it's keeping track of everything about your customers. So you know uh, when you called them last, when you need to call them again, you keep all that in your computer or you keep it keep it in this. If you're using the right back, you've got, uh, not everybody has the CRM uh, access on there because you might be using another one, but you've got to track everything that you're, you're doing there. And you might be using the quote book. Um, same thing. That is not a CRM though. Some guys think, well, I'm going to use that as a CRM. No, that's a closing tool. If you put somebody in this, you're going to print out a right back for them. You're going to give them numbers, a proposal. 
and then hopefully get an offer to buy. You're going to put them on paper. And I think that's going to be our next episode that we do is how do we get people uh, put on paper? Um, let's see. What else have I got? on? Oh, I was going to show you something else too. So I always know what I'm going to say when somebody ha a customer has a certain response. Um, I know what I'm going to do. I know my success rate. The other day, I'm going through some of my stuff because we're getting ready to do a couple of new conferences, one in Oklahoma City and uh, two in Las Vegas. And so we track all of our closing ratios on this stuff. Uh, somebody in my office here tracks all that. So we know what closes work or what, what wording works uh, with the customers out there. You guys have to do the same thing. Uh, something we run into a lot of people don't know more than one close and they don't even know a, a name of that close but the number one close out there is if i could would you it's not the uh best close but it's a start um but track what you're doing and uh what else have i got here stay in touch with your customers call them text them email them video message them, don't give up on those people, but most of all, pay attention to your CRM. Get in there and wear that CRM out. Make notes and uh, get your customers to come back in the store. Hey, Brian, you got anything to add to this? No, man, I think you covered it. Okay, um, I think that's it, guys. So it is a start to uh, hopefully a good week. What is it? February 21st. I don't think we even have any holidays coming up. Oh, yesterday we had President's Day. Uh, so that is over. It's going to be a long week. So you've got plenty to do. Pick up that phone and start calling your customers. Get them placed on the appointment board and set some appointments with them. But don't let your customers just uh, go to the grave without you contacting them. Uh, hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Tommy Adie, and we'll see you next Tuesday, same time. Bye.